Can Recording in progress. On Trustee Doggett, would you please read the line of all of it? Yes. The Pacific <clears throat> District acknowledges that we gather on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramkratish Ohlone people. As guests, we humbly extend our gratitude to the Ramkratish Ohlone elders and community. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homelands, and we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples. As the original stewards of this land, the Ramatush Ohlone understand the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of maintaining harmony with nature. Likewise, the Pacific School District commits to teaching our school community how to be responsible stewards of this land. <laughs> Roger, we could please take a roll call. Yes, uh, Trustee Bredow. Here. Trustee Bredini. Here. Trustee Doggett. Here. Trustee Bredow. Here. Trustee Bredow. Here. The district records the audio portion of the meetings. All recordings are kept in the superintendent's office for 30 days and are available during the time periods for inspection by members of the public on district equipment without charge. In-person speakers wishing to address the board on agenda or non-agenda items, please complete a request card with your name, address, and the item number and submit it to the board president or the superintendent. You'll be called to address the board and may speak for up to three minutes. Virtual speakers wishing to address the board on agenda or non-agenda items, please submit your first and last name and agenda item you wish to speak on in the Q&A area of the webinar. Please do not submit comments or questions in the Q&A area. You'll be called to address the board. Your microphone will be unmuted and you may speak for up to three minutes. Please note, the public is welcome to provide comment to the board. Remarks are limited to three minutes. Unless extended or limited by the vote of the board, a maximum of 20 minutes unless extended by the board is allocated for each subject discussion. The Brown Act open meeting <clears throat> regulations under which the board must operate do not allow board members to commit or comment on non-agenda items or information you may bring up that are not on the agenda. Additionally, no action can be taken. Um, can be taken. However, the board may give direction to the staff following a comment. Um, approval of the agenda. <clears throat> are there any questions regarding the agenda? <clears throat> All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. And do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. The motion passes by zero. All right. So approval of this consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda would be approved with one motion, which is not debatable and which re requires an unanimous vote of passage. If any member of the board, the superintendent, or the public so request, any item shall be removed from the section <clears throat> and placed in the regular order of following approval of the consent agenda. Are there any questions regarding the consent agenda? Okay. Uh, seeing none, uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, and do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. All right, communications. Um, our first communication today is with LSCA. Hello. I was going to say good evening, but it's not quite <laughs> evening. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Williams. LSEA has appreciated our informal and formal chats, and we look forward to a good year working together. One week to go. As we are all well aware, the parking lots are full with our certificated staff providing their free labor to prepare for Pacifica students. This year, it looks like we will have about five paid hours to unpack, prep, and get to know our new colleagues. Yikes, not even a full working day. Add to that, our site admins won't even be on campus because they are at an iReady training. I started to list out all the things a teacher in Pacifica is expected to do in those five hours. I myself started to panic with all that's ahead of me, and I've got 21 years in. Can you imagine what our new hires or colleagues with new grade levels are up against? LSEA members are concerned with the professional development days that have been scheduled for the first week of school on August 22nd and 24th. Our school board approved and adopted both the K-5 science curriculum at $397,000 and the K-2 phonics at $20,000 in the spring. 
Surely the adoptions included the PD. Unfortunately, the district has scheduled these trainings out of our contract hours. Yes, compensation has been offered at our contracted rate. However, not all staff will be available. Many are dealing with childcare issues, getting to their second jobs, and figuring out lesson plans for the next day. Members wonder why, we, why weren't the already calendared Wednesday PD days keeping the trainings during contract hours and not spending more district funds. I am appreciative of Dr. Williams reaching out to LSEA ahead of the publication of the board packet to chat about all the money going to contractors and consultants. It is a lot. While LSEA is appreciative of the heads up, we still have concerns. We're spending $21,000 on a consultant for one single month of service, which includes our professional development day on Monday. $31,000 for a survey on feasibility of a bond and parcel tax. A consultant to develop these measures at $7,000 a month and $26,000 for printing and mailers. These numbers alone don't seem high. But let's say we use that consultant just three times and there are only two mailers. With all that spending I just mentioned, we're at a 1% raise for certificated staff. Beyond this, what happened with the information from the consultant during the 2021-2022 school year regarding the parcel tax? Is this really a necessary expenditure? All of these expenditures are from the general fund, which funds our salaries. As the board is well aware, compensation for your labor partners has not been settled. It seems there is plenty of money to be spent now, so we look forward to getting to the negotiations table in September. The forecast must be good. We hope you don't spend it all before we settle, especially with the knowledge of the difficulty of hiring teachers due to our low salaries. We are grateful to the classified staff for their hard work to get our classrooms ready. We know along with being understaffed, they are greatly underpaid and underappreciated. Thank you to those of you who put in the work under challenging working conditions and management. LSEA reached out to board president Burkini last week. LSEA is doing everything in our powers to communicate with board members. We must change things and have regular conversations. Board members, we'd like to see you more at our schools. Come by our classrooms, come to our union meetings. We know you're, tonight you're delegating school responsibilities. Please visit all the schools and all the staffs. We have read through your draft board governance handbook that is on the agenda this evening. In order to check all those boxes and do your due diligence as elected officials, please collaborate with your labor partner leaders. Our first union meeting of the year is September 7th. More information to follow for you. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, next, CSEA. Hello, my name is Nicole Thayers and I am the president of CSEA Chapter 128. Tonight, I welcome our new superintendent, Dr. Denise Williams, as well as the Board of Trustees. I would also like to welcome new classified employees, Laura Navarro for, in a child nutrition cook position, Maria Cabrera, a custodian one, Alden Jerez, a van driver, and Danita King, a paraprofessional. As we look forward to the first day of school on Monday, August 14th, I want us to remember that this is our first in-person opening in a few years. This will be a special day when we can put the awful days of COVID behind us so we can really start to move forward. We will reopen negotiations in November. We are going to, into these meetings with good intentions and hope for positive outcomes. We are hoping that the district will understand how important a fair wage increase is to really attract and retain district employees. And lastly, it did come as a bit of a surprise that um, the time of the board meeting had changed. Um, after being surprised, I reached out to Carla and Dr. Williams, and I understand that I was supposed to have found out sooner, but we had a miscommunication. We will continue to strive for clearer communication so all of our employees and community will understand when things change. I hope this change makes things better for everyone in the future, and I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone on Monday, and I'm really looking forward to a good year ahead. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Um, people do, uh, wishing to address the board, um, we have Mr. Patrick Sayers. Good evening. I'm Patrick Sayers. I'm with the Pacifica School Volunteers. 
and uh, we look forward to a to our 26th year of volunteer service to the Pacifica School District. And we're very proud of all the work that we've done. And we really look forward to uh, a new year uh, this year. We are starting our process of um, enrolling and placing uh, previous volunteers and new volunteers. And so that process starts every year with the new school year. On Monday, we're, we will have a table set up outside the PD room at IBL's multi-purpose room. And uh, we'll have for the teachers who are interested in having a volunteer in their classroom, we'll have a request form, uh, which they can look at and also fill out. And we'd like the teachers to start, and teachers and principals, of the schools to start thinking about uh, their volunteer needs. And uh, we'd like to be able to hand out as many volunteer requests as possible. Uh, the other thing is in terms of actually getting volunteers, uh, we just wanna put the word out that we are enrolling volunteers and that if you're interested or if you have any questions, you can go to the Pacifica School uh, volunteers.org site and they have a volunteer registration form, but they also have a lot of information about volunteering. And I just want to kind of put a good word out for our volunteers that uh, we're really we're really looking for commitment on the part of volunteers. You you don't have to volunteer a lot. You don't have to have a lot of experience, but we want you to commit to a classroom to a teacher. And we primarily focus on academics, specifically around literacy, teaching how to read, how to improve reading comprehension. But we also have uh, volunteers who specialize in math or science or social studies, uh, any, of the, any of the other academics that, uh, that we provide in the classroom. And it's really helpful to have that extra person for that student who may be struggling in the classroom to have that extra one-on-one -on -one help uh, from uh, a volunteer. Uh, so um, we're looking for a very a good successful year. And um, we hope that uh, you'll let all your family members know, your neighbors know that we are looking for volunteers to be in the classroom. And I wanted to thank Dr. Williams and Will Lucy and Barbara uh, Bulat for uh, helping us um, set up and get started this year. So really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, moving on to board correspondence. Does anybody have any board correspondence? <laughs> I did meet with Dr. Williams, but it's on. Anyone else? For communications or for correspondence? Uh, correspondence. Okay, I don't have any correspondence. Okay. Um, I got uh, a letter from the LCA president reiterating what she said that she'd really like to see more of the board out there. Um, and we could talk um, in the future just about how maybe that can happen or what their ideas are about that. Um, I also got a letter, which I think maybe a few of you got also from um, Mr. Jim Allen discussing the field line on you know, the new field that's happening in Notre Dame. Um, so that's it for me. I, I have some too. Oh, I'm sorry. Correspondence. Yes. Um, I also received the um, the email from Jim Allen about field line for Ortega, and um, I think I mentioned this last meeting or in the summer. Um, that maybe we should have a board member at their quarterly meetings so that we're up to date on their needs. Um, I also received an email from Tara Knotts. Last year, our first day of school was a little disappointing for some of the staff and parents because it was kind of um, not tidy. So I'm hoping that this year, our first day of school, the grounds you know, the school can be tidy. And I know we have a lot going on. I think we could do our best. Uh, she also mentioned the facility use fees and parent square. So um, I did refer those emails to somebody else. Um, I also received an email from Pacifica 
peace people about racism in Pacifica, asking me, I was referred by, um, referred by Pi to be on their panel in October. So I said yes. And then um, <clears throat> this is a big one for me. Uh, Zoe Marinkovich, a teacher from um, Jefferson Elementary School District reached out to me and she CC'd one of our, um, our previous educators, Jonathan Harris, who is now working for San Mateo County Outdoor Education. <laughs> and she was asking me if um, I would be willing to advocate with them for free outdoor education in the County of San Mateo. <laughs> and I said, yes. And the reason she reached out to me is because I advocated for that in 2011 with my kids. And then, you know, now we have free, free outdoor ed in our district. And so I just wanted to let my board members know in case anybody wanted to come on board with us in the process of whatever that means, meeting with uh, uh, government officials, uh, going to meetings, letters, whatever. Just let me know. Any other board members? Uh, the only other course one that's all mentioned is uh, Gmail. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we received a correspondence, actually a request from Ocean Shore PTO, and the request is for consideration of naming uh, their library after one of our beloved um, employees, Patty McNally. And this recognition and honor will be in reference to their 50th anniversary this fall. And so um, asking the board for consideration and approval of, of this request at a later date. Thank you. All right, um, then uh, board superintendent communications. Communications. Okay. Um, so the only thing is there in the summer with the governance workshop, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. The governance workshop and then um, Yesterday morning was the first meeting at the special ed um, social uh, at uh, they meet once a month um, at Soul Grind. And there were a lot of new parents and a lot of staff members. Um, since school hadn't started yet, there were a lot of staff members that were able to come, but that weren't able to. So I'd say there eight or nine staff members there, and about nine or 10 parents. So it was a really good get together. That's good. Mm -hmm. I don't think to add other than the governance. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. um, I had uh, one, I got uh, reached out to by Elise Lester, who's the uh, representative of uh, Mark Berman's off out of Mark Berman's office. Uh, we had a quick meeting over at Starbucks, and um, she just was wanting to make sure that uh, she, she let us know that Mark Berman's very much in support of the schools, and she wanted to make sure we had an open communication. If there's anything um, we're needing help and support with that they're there to help us and support us. Um, also, I've, I've had weekly meetings with uh, Dr. Williams and um, that's it. And for me, I just want to say, um, I'd like to thank the, just the entire Pacifica School District community. I've had a chance to meet not only with um, some parents and community members over the last month, uh, and prior to my arrival, but also with leadership and definitely with our labor partners and just looking forward to meeting more individuals as I immerse myself uh, within the community. And today I can say um, I had a chance to meet one of our new enrollees and uh, was a wonderful experience walking up and we just kind of played peekaboo and she wanted to say hi, but she wanted to hide. She wanted to say hello. She wanted to hide. So that just brings us to the new year, just refreshed and excitement. And so I too am excited to serve as your superintendent. Thank you very much. And welcome. Very much. Awesome. All right. Moving on to district goals. Uh, the district Goal, the district values the goals provided in our local control accountability plan and strategic plan. All of our district board agenda items are tied to these goals. One or more goals are listed in the description of each board agenda item. The details for each of those district goals can be accessed on our district website at www.pacificasd.org. All right, we first have our first action item uh, with 
Dr. Williams. Yes, hi. And so, oh, may, uh, actually, no, I think I skipped over. What's that say? Yeah. Did I skip yeah. over LCAP? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, actually, we first have a presentation of the LCAP local indicators um, with Will. All right, this is an information item. And just to give you a um, little bit of a background here, um, the, uh, this item was actually presented at the last board meeting that we had. Um, and it's around the local uh, control accountability plan, the local indicators report. Um, and every year, uh, California Department of Education requires that at the meeting that you approve the local control accountability plan. At that same meeting, you do the, this informational item around the local indicators report. So I'm, I'm repeating this presentation because we didn't have enough of trustees to officially make it an item that you're presented. So, uh, that's why I put a repeat. So I, I apologize to those who have heard this already. Um, so the local control uh, accountability plan local indicators are based off the LCFF evaluators rubrics, which is basically the California uh, dashboard. And we have um, 11 indicators that measure uh, performance. Uh, um, uh, nine of them are relate to uh, K district. Um, and then there are, there are six state indicators, um, and then there's five local indicators. And as this uh, slide shows, uh, the priority one, priority two, priority three, and priority six are um, are uh, um, and priority seven are the local indicators for that. So that this uh, slide shows where all of where where we get the information for those indicators. We'll go through each one of them. Uh, so the first indicator, uh, the first indicator is uh, uh, basic service. So um, this is pulled from the uh, school accountability re uh, report cards, um, and uh, this is, uh, has to do with teacher assignments, and the objective is that uh, to have appropriately assigned teachers and assigned to curriculum aligned instructional materials and a safe, clean, functional school facility. So teacher assignments, um, this is the data that we have on our latest data that we had on this. This is, doesn't pertain to this year, but uh, uh, previous years um, that we had uh, one teacher mis uh, misassignment of teachers of English learners. We had one, six special education uh, teachers were uh, considered misassignments. Um, and then two general education teachers were misassignments, total being nine total misassignments. Um, access to instructional materials. Uh, uh, we uh, have been very good in that area for the last number of years in, in, in assuring that every student have, has access to uh, the, the standard aligned instructional materials, uh, both at school. So they have the availability at school and they also have it at home. And then our uh, facility conditions, um, based off the last FIT report, we had uh, four sites um, that were identified not to not meeting good repair standards. Uh, three were, were, uh, were indicated as fair rating and one was site was considered a poor rating. Yeah. The uh, second priority uh, is the implementation of the academic standards. And this is, uh, we pull this information based off a panorama survey that is given out twice a year, um, each year. And this is based off the May 23rd, May, May 2023 uh, survey, uh, where 81, student, 81 teachers completed the survey. And uh, a summary of the responses indicated that the ELA and math were at full imp implementation phase. Um, and the science and history are, were at either beginning development or initial implementation stage. And as you can see, the science one, we're probably going to be a little farther along with that one since we just adopted the new, um, our new K-5 science adoption. And in priority three, which is, has to do with the parent and family engagement, 
Um, and, and the objective here is to determine progress of parent and family engagement. And there's two columns there. One has to do with the perception of barriers for parent engagement within a school and in the perception of the degree of family engagement with, with school. Um, and so as you can see, we kind of comparing from September of 2022 to May of 2023, and there was just a slight increase in the favorable responses to questions around barriers. And, 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 um, and for the parent reception, there was uh, a slight uh, increase too, uh, even though it was a low percentage of favorable responses to the degree of family engagement with school. Uh, the six priorities around school climate, and again, we utilize the uh, student climate survey through Panorama, and uh, you can see here on the chart that it's measuring the prog progress of, uh, of connectiveness to school, student connectiveness to school, and, and student safety. And, you know, the, the way the survey questions are presented, they're presented in, the, in, in grade three through five and uh, six through eight, so that's why they're divided up there. Um, and it's again, it's comparing the uh, spring of 2022 to the uh, fall of 2022 uh, to the spring of 2023. Um, and so you can see that, um, in fact, that's a typo there. Should be the spring of 2022, the fall of 2023, and this, no, fall of 20, the spring, yeah, no, that's great. It's right. Spring of 2022, fall of 2022, and, and then spring. Um, so, um, as you can see, it's just a little bit of a decline in the in the in the uh, uh, third through fifth in uh, school of connectedness, uh, uh, connectedness <clears throat> to school, and uh, also a slight decline in school safety. A, a little bit of a more of a, a decline in the sixth or eighth uh, uh, around school safety, and then access access to a broad course of study, and this is just. Is this is to measure the extent in which all students have access to and are enrolled in a broad course of study. Um, and this was a self-reflection survey that was given out. Um, and all the students, uh, um, ha first of all, all students have access to all content areas through enrollment, but barriers do exist both outside and, and, uh, of school and within school. The barriers out within school all, are the alternative methods to demonstrate skill competency. Uh, uh, the, the tools to scaffold learning um, and the implementation of those tools, uh, and then the inconsistent time allocated for certain subject areas, um, and the barriers outside of school were, uh, which is not as much, bit, this survey is a bit dated, but the lack of access to internet and technology, that seems to have been um, um, dealt, and then the inconsistent uh, access to science experiments, um, and then the lack of parent education, yes? Oh, sorry. And that's it. Yes. You didn't say if there are questions. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm going to ask the question. Um, there you go. Wonderful. Uh, so for priority seven, just a, a quick understanding, the self-reflection survey, was that the self-reflection of students? No, it was a, a self-reflection self of a, a, a cross there was sample pe sample teachers, some students, um, and some support staff were all part of that. So each year, it, it's given out to a, a sample of boss. Um, Got it. Teacher. So it's a mix yeah. of teachers. It's, it's, it's not all. It's not these questions about including all of these. So we have selected some special ed teachers, some students, and then some um, upper grade students, and then some uh, general ed teachers, and then support staff. Um, and, and I guess one of the answers that I think I was very curious about uh, was the al alternative methods to demonstrate skill competency, which I think is a really important um, area. And especially if this came from our uh, folks in the school, be they teachers or students, I'm curious to, to hear what the process is as you look at some of these answers, how to take those insights that you found, some of the summaries and take the next step to address them um, in the change in instruction or the change in our practices. Yes, yes, and 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 this survey again is a bit dated, meaning that it was at the beginning of last school year. So um, there were many new things that were occurring okay. throughout the school year. 
that had to do with alternative methods to present. Yeah, that is definitely definitely uh, um, something that we need to look at, look at, and discuss, and and, and uh, you know act on. I just have comments. Uh, one of them was for parent engagement. And I was just hoping that this year we could have like an all district assembly, maybe on um, how to coach or support your kids in math or reading, uh, something in the beginning of the school year where parents can and the students can be invited to listen. Maybe we can have um, uh, child care available um, just so that we can start to get the community going again. And then my other one was for, uh, you know, the expectations for the kids this year. I kind of feel like, you know, COVID's done. We're trying to catch up. We're trying to, you know, get them to where they need to be. And I just wanted to let everybody know that our local libraries have tutors if they sign up um, on the websites for those if anybody needs additional support. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, all right. Now, <laughs> on to the action items. Uh, so this is actually a board trustee a school assignment. So actually, this is a little bit you know, more me than anybody else. So I thought I would start at the end and we can just um, pick a school. Uh, I can, if you want to, do you guys want to know who, where you're at now? Or do you know where you're at? It's 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 oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I guess I'll just start with uh, Trustee Doggett. Is well, I have not been representing um, Ocean Shore or Cabrillo or uh, Ortega. So I would like to just try one of those schools this year since I haven't worked with them before. So, okay. Whichever one, unless somebody has their heart set on one particular one, I'll take e any of the three. So if somebody wants any of those, just tell me. <laughs> okay. I will go with, um, I'll go with Ocean Shore. Okay. All right. All right. And next, Elizabeth. Um, I'm open to any of them, so I'll let the others choose first. Um, I would like to stay maybe with LMEC because I've been working with SPED. Okay. And also because that's more, they have more things at nine in the morning on a work day. And um, so I can work around that. I think easier than some other trustees can. Okay. So if I, I'll keep LMEC and then I'll let you, I'll take whatever's left over. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. My life's a little easier. I'd love to take Sunset Ridge. Okay. Yep. <laughs> all right. Let's turn Sunset Ridge. Uh, I was just going to ask for Sunset Ridge. It's been <laughs> like seven years since I've been there, but um, you can still come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always going to be in Sunset Ridge. You'll see me. Uh, <laughs> hang out there too. <laughs> I, I did want to kind of throw something in. Uh, because for the past two years, we've been hearing from staff that they'd like to see us more. And so I was wondering if we could have a rotation, too, so that there's at least two board members going into one school each month. And so I'm not sure how complicated that is. Hmm. But um, I think that's something that we could easily do. And if not, then maybe... Um, you know, board members could cover for those who couldn't do a rotation. So, for example, like if um, if I were to keep IBL, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would go in, you know, once a month to see, to do a site visit or a PTO meeting, you know, whatever it is, an event that they have, but then that there could be another rotating board member to go in also, so that they're seeing two of us each month. I don't know, just throwing it out there. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I do think, and 
but as we come out of COVID and mm -hmm. it probably, and that is one thing the unions are asking is just mm -hmm. to see more of us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely something, yeah, I'm not sure if we want to go into an official thing where we're two signed at every school. I would think with this, maybe we should stay assigned to one mm -hmm. so that we know we're responsible for the graduation of open houses and stuff like that. But then the rest of us make an extra effort to float around to the others, yeah. but, but have one person who's the designated person. So but then the rest of us need to make an effort to, yeah, to I, go around. I just want to acknowledge that like that would be two days off of work that I would have to mm -hmm. take as a full-time worker to do two school visits. I think previously we hadn't set an exact target on how many. So it was like once every couple of months, mm -hmm. what have you. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to acknowledge that that. Open houses are different. You know, open houses are different. Yeah. Those are different because those are in the evening. Right. But school visits require daytime. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be one visit, you know, one person assigned, like say the Lobos assigned to IDL. Mm -hmm. And then maybe <clears throat> maybe the next month I could go to Ortega's um walkathon mm -hmm. carnival. Right. You, you know, know you that, can do that now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, you but I mean just you want to do it in official capacity because I feel like we yeah. float through the yeah. I, I feel like we've already done that and yeah. it's not happening. So if it's not happening, then I feel like we need something that's more concrete and yeah. committed. Why that's just me. Mm -hmm. um, but I can I have Ortega? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and I think I think what I'm hearing from you is a little bit more definition mm -hmm. because to me the school board in the role of governance, mm -hmm. if I'm visiting a school, mm -hmm. to me, it's to, 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 to take a look at the practices happening in the school mm -hmm. um, and understand what the challenges might be, what the opportunities might be, hear from staff directly, hear from students, hear from administrators. And so that, that, that is a, it's it's not like showing up to Boo Fest at Sunset mm -hmm. Ridge, right? Like that's fun that everybody should go to, but you're not going to get the same experience if you do classroom visits and what have you. Mm -hmm. And so to me, this is about classroom visits mm -hmm. and about actually taking the time to do that um, kind of listening tour or what have you uh, in classrooms. And so I, I just wanted to make that distinction because I think that showing up more is a great thing that we should all do across open houses and fun events. But this to me feels like the official listening, like owning the feedback from the school and, and hearing from that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'll just make a commitment to visit two schools mm -hmm. each month. Mm -hmm. And one of them will be my official one. Okay. I'll make that same commitment. Okay. Um, I think I would like, because I have an eighth grader that's graduated from IBL this year, it'd be easier for me to be at IBL. So I'd like to go ahead and take that um, this year. But um, so this sort of leaves the Valamar Cabrillo um, that are dangling there. If we want. I can, I can do Valamar. Okay. And I wouldn't mind taking uh, Brooke, your uh, Cabrillo one more time. I didn't really get enough time this year because of my own things that were going on. Um, but I wouldn't mind spending more time. Now, and I live a block away. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So that is what we will do. So it's uh, Brokini and it's got Cabrillo and IBL. Verdal is LMEC and Valimar. Uh, Doggett, Ocean Shore, Villa Lobos, Ortega, and uh, Sunset Ridge is Patel. Sound right? Mm -hmm. Can okay. I make a request? Sure. Uh, there's some events that happen, like the Read Aloud Day in April, um, <laughs> other morning events. And I work in the morning, but I could actually make those if I knew you know, a month in advance or a month and a half in advance if they know when the dates and the times are, I could, you know, work it out with my job. Yeah, that's uh, actually one thing is mostly we're on the list, but making sure that we're getting the communications from principals, um, I think it's your parents square so that we are privy to all the dates that are coming. Um, so I'll provide the Okay. 
And we're going to add a section to the, um, the weekly update about um, just calendar of the schools. Uh, that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. So um, I guess we will need to have a motion to approve these school assignments. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the school assignments. And do I have a second? A second. All right. Please raise your hand. Okay. All right. It is next is the uh, board governance draft handbook. Um, we spent some time uh, in the middle of the summer. We're going over that. And um, uh, so we're going to approve that. Are there any questions regarding this item? Questions? All right. Do I have a motion to approve the attached draft of the, of the Pacifica School District Board Governance Handbook for 2023-2024? I make a motion. Okay. And do I have a second? second. All in favor, please raise your hand. If you pass this by favor. All right, great. All right, and next <laughs> is, uh, uh, let's see, resolution regarding 2023-08-09-8 uh, regarding board compensation for missed meetings. Um, are there any questions regarding this resolution? Do I have a motion to approve the resolution? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. And a second. One second. Okay. All right. We've made it. Uh, <laughs> Board of Trustees and Superintendents recap and future agenda items. Anyone like to? Is, is it on future yeah. agenda items? Yeah, future agenda items or comment on the rest of the meeting oh. tonight. The Ocean Shore PTO wants the library name changed. Yeah. Dr. William put at a different date, oh, yeah. right? We would put it on yeah. 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 the agenda. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we add that to the agenda. Resolution yes. of renaming. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's already there. Mm -hmm. We're making sure. <laughs> All right. So one one request that I have is, um, you know, I know the principals are going through iReady training. Mm -hmm. I'd love any feedback. Like, I don't know what how to get it, you know, or what have you, but feedback on kind of readiness to understand and act on uh, the data from the first um, iReady assessment that happens. Mm -hmm. And so this doesn't, this is not necessarily the next board meeting or the meeting even after, mm -hmm. but at some point to understand does our staff and our teaching staff feel like they have what they need to both understand the data and then take actions on it? So I, I don't know the best way to do that, but um, I want to make sure that investment in that assessment is not just an investment in testing, uh, but an investment in uh, changes in instructional practice if necessary. So two ways we can provide an update in our weekly, uh, again, under our ed services, and then also um, plan a presentation uh, in the future just to give you how we cross walk the data um, with the form with in class performance, and then also uh, with cats the CAS, excuse me, uh, results as well. And so that is coming up in September, I believe. Okay. Yes. Um, I would like to add um, Indigenous People Day, mm -hmm. possible um, activities or ideas um, before the October meeting when we usually read the resolution. So before okay. the actual day, I think we read it after we went to or something. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge um, and welcoming our new superintendent mm -hmm. that we're all very excited you know, for a new year and a fresh start. And I'm hoping that the staff and the parents and the teachers and, you know, everybody is feeling the same way that we are too. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate, I'm very excited about the new year. I'm excited to meet everyone finally and finally get to, you know, get out there and start working. <laughs> so, so anyway, but um, so thank you. And, uh, and I'm excited to be here and uh, we'll make you all proud. <laughs> the entire community. <laughs> thank you, Sabrina. One. Hi. Plus one to both of us. <laughs> <Yes. laughs>
But um, actually, as a as an indicator of, uh, I think what I'm really excited about with your leadership is a comment that you've brought up a number of times. I think I would love to request having an update on that in the agenda, and that's how are we supporting our um, uh, our high performing students, and what are the practices or opportunities that are available. You brought that up, I think. Oftentimes, mm-hmm. at, at rightly so, when we think about equitable instruction, we focus mm-hmm. on the students with the greatest needs. Um, but part of that equitable instruction also means mm-hmm. how do we support students um, who may need additional, uh, you know, work, uh, not work, I don't want to say more work for mm-hmm. students, but uh, yeah. 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 So, what, you know, what are the, what are the opportunities for those students? Okay. All right. Any other comments? Okay, we will adjourn our meeting at 6 46 p.m. It's the earliest <laughs> meeting <laughs> of all time. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. My husband's going to be like, What are you doing? Signature, 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 handbook, signature. Well, that's the key. Now I'm not going home.